Our next speaker is Kaveh Sharuz. He's a lawyer and human rights activist, a senior fellow with McDonald Laurier Institute's Center for Advancing Canada's Interests Abroad. He is also a former senior policy advisor on human rights to Global Affairs Canada. He is a graduate of Harvard Law School and the University of Toronto. He's written widely on human rights issues and international affairs. I met him last year when he spoke at the Geneva Summit for Human Rights and Democracy. He led a recent successful effort to convince Canada's parliament to recognize the 1988 massacre of political prisoners in Iran as constituting crimes against humanity under international law. He resides in Toronto and I have the honor and pleasure to give the floor to Kaveh. Thank you so much, Halal. Um, I want to thank the organizers of this event, in particular UN Watch, and I want to thank the journalists in attendance, and I hope that you will be the voice of the Iranians who have been silenced by their regime. Let me begin by quoting several sentences from a recent press release. Quote, women and girls continue to be treated as second-class citizens in Iran. Quote, gender discrimination permeates almost all areas of law and practice treating Iranian women as second-class citizens. Quote, blatant discrimination exists in Iranian law and practice that must change in several areas of their lives, including a marriage, divorce, employment, and culture, Iranian women are either restricted or need permission from their husbands or paternal guardians, depriving them of their autonomy and human dignity. These constructs are completely unacceptable and must be reformed now, end quote. These quotes are not from a press release put out by an Iranian opposition group or the US State Department, or even an international human rights organization. They're from a press release published on International Women's Day, March 8th of this year by the UN itself in announcing the report of its special rapporteur on Iran, Javid Rahman. The outrage of the United Nations declaring in March that Iran's women are second-class citizens, and then in April electing it to its Commission on the Status of Women is why I join my colleagues today in expressing shock and revulsion at the results of that vote. The Commission on the Status of Women describes itself as the principal global intergovernmental body exclusively ded dedicated to the promotion of gender equality and the empowerment of women. It's precisely the institution that the women of Iran should be able to look to to defend them against the misogyny and gender apartheid to which they've been subjected to for four decades. Alas, thanks to the votes of UN members, that institution is now itself a tool of oppression. Let's spend just a moment speaking about the exact nature of this oppression and apartheid. Of course, nothing I can say can match the knowledge possessed by the women at this event, in particular my colleague Shafarek, who will speak soon, who have experienced the injustice firsthand and have bravely fought against it at great risk to their own lives. This is a regime that upon coming to power made women its top enemy. It controlled their choices large and small. It took away their right to determine for themselves what to wear something that we in the West take as so basic a right that we don't even think about it. It imposed an interpretation of Islamic law and its legal system that literally values women's lives as worth half of men. Again, I wanna emphasize that's not figurative language, it is literal. A woman was made the property of her father and then her husband. Her ability to work, travel, or even to leave the house is legally conditional on the permission of a male figure. Her ability to get a divorce is severely restricted. She is, first and foremost, an object for sexual satisfaction of her husband. Her testimony is worth half of a man. Again, not figuratively, literally. Her right to inheritance relative to her brothers is severely limited. Where women have fought for their rights, a common tactic by the regime supporters has been to throw acid in their faces to permanently disfigure them. Women are not allowed to enter stadiums. Women are not allowed to sing solo in public. Women are stoned in Iran. Based on a religious theory that virgin women get into heaven, female political prisoners have been raped by prison guards or married to their prison guards as they describe it, prior to their executions so that they will not get eternal rest. In Iran, a father that cuts off his daughter's head in an honor killing gets less punishment for that crime than a woman who organizes against compulsory hijab. There are currently women Monire Arab Shahi, Yasaman Ariani, Mujgan Keshavars, sentenced to decades in prison for doing precisely that type of organization. The word evil has fallen out of favor in international affairs in describing the behavior of states, but I feel no reservation in saying that this treatment of women 
is evil. But now it's evil that has the approval of the United Nations. And we now know, thanks to the work of Hillel and UN Watch, that it's an evil that was supported with the votes of at least four EU and Western democracies. So I wanna use this opportunity to denounce the election of Iran to the Commission on the Status of Women, and in particular denounce the support that Iran received from free and democratic states. And I wanna specifically call on those states to indicate how they voted. If you voted for Iran, say it publicly and explain to the feminists in Iran's prisons, explain it to the girl children who are legally married off, explain to the international community why you supported this misogyny. If the reason they put forth for their support is that having Iran as part of the commission will improve Iran's behavior, I challenge them to show me one example where Iran's behavior or the behavior of any dictatorship like Iran is improved by engaging in this process. And if the reason they supported Iran is because they want a piece of the financial benefits they may derive if there was a return to the JCPOA, then be honest and tell us that women's rights are of no value to you. And I call on the states that did not vote for Iran to denounce this decision not the mealy-mouthed, equivocating, worth-smithing we heard from the US, de Depart U.S. State Department spokesperson, Matt Price, yesterday. What we're calling for is a forceful denunciation and a true expression of revulsion. Iran's treatment of women does not belong in the 21st century. It does not belong to the civilized world, and it certainly does not belong in the UN's Commission on the Status of Women. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Kaveh. 